Oops. This is a fountain pump, sometimes known as a fish tank pump or a fish pump for short. Its value is about $8.49 delivered to your door when purchased on Amazon.com. This is a WP20 TIG torch. It's capable of about 250 amps when hooked up to a water cooler. Behind me is an Everlast Power Take 255 EXT. Next to it is a five gallon bucket of water. The torch will be hooked up to the Everlast Power Take 255 EXT. The fish pump will be sitting in that bucket of water. But the question is, does it serve as a water cooler? Step number one, we need to attach the TIG Torch cooler line to the actual pump itself. Now this is just a piece of 3 8 rubber hose with a couple of spring clamps. You made it up to the nipple that came with the actual uh, fish pump itself. No big deal. All we gotta do is make sure it doesn't leak. Then I'm gonna stick it in the water and the first thought that came to mind... I'll, uh, you know what, I'll be the first one to say it. That's, that's pretty ghetto. I mean, I, I seriously hope it works. <laughs> I guess we'll soon find out. The other end is going to be secured to the rim of the bucket with a pony clamp and as soon as we plug it in, as soon as we plug it in, let's try this again. As soon as I move the bucket close enough for the pump to reach the outlet, we'll try this again. As you can see it turns on, it's flowing. It's not flowing a whole lot, but it is flowing nonetheless. It's definitely pushing through there. Initial temperature, I don't really trust this thermometer too much, but the initial temperature is coming up about 69 degrees and uh, you know 20 degrees Celsius. So forget about that max number because it's shooting through water. It's kind of inaccurate, but you know, it is what it is. Now this job is a small job. That's what I'm going to start this off with. I don't know if this pump is actually going to continue pumping when it gets hot or what's going to happen, catastrophic failure, or whatever. So we started on a small job. Now this job is just three weld nipples welded to uh, an intake tube. Basically, it's all it is. About 130, 140 amps. Now a lot of people are probably thinking, how did we come up with uh, you know this? Well. Roy Crumrein, better known as Crummy Welding on Instagram, we were both on a live stream together as we often do, and we just got into the topic of TIG coolers, and I think it was a misinterpreted comment where somebody said something about sticking something in a bucket or a small pump or whatever, and I was like, well, why don't we just try throwing a small pump in a five gallon bucket to see if it works? So <laughs> that's what the purpose of this is, we're just seeing if it actually works. So as soon as I get done welding it, uh, yeah, that's actually cool to the touch, but the total elapsed time to weld this piece, the actual total on time of welding, was 5 minutes and 38 seconds. So that's probably not that big of a deal. Take a look at the temperature on it. We get 105 degrees on the actual part. That's after it cooled off for a few minutes. And the actual torch itself is about 98 to 107 degrees or so. I probably should have taken a temperature of the part first uh, instead of the torch first, but, you know realistically I mean that's uh that's not that bad I mean it's uh you know after five and a half minutes worth of welding you're like a oh, whoopity do you know how hot could it possibly get so but for an initial test I thought it would get a little bit hotter than that so so let's check the temperature of the water real quick looks like we got about 73 and a half degrees Fahrenheit so that's an increase of about four and a half degrees from when we started well not bad five and a half minutes four and a half degrees Pretty sure that's the surface of the water, so if we gave it a stir, it might, you know, come back down, but I didn't check that. Now, just for fun, let's blast out some coupons. I want to do some continuous welding, so starting temperature is about 85 degrees on these coupons, and I'm literally just going to blow right through them non-stop. Now, this camera angle, as boring as it is, not moving or just sitting there and not zooming in and out or anything else like that, we just want to make sure that we have complete continuity when it comes to uh, this, uh, this video. I'm not stopping for anything other than to grab a new piece of filler wire, and that's it. Now, I'm going to utilize this time to just kind of practice. And this kind of brings up a really good point while I buzz on through all of this right here. It's a really good idea to just grab a piece of metal or a coupon and literally just fill it up with beads. Now, a lot of people have suggested this on other channels and stuff like that, and we know it's pretty standard practice to do. But one thing that I do a little bit different or suggest doing different is to change directions, to change the pattern, not just run line after line after line. 
I usually suggest you know, trying to feed different ways. I suggest trying to change directions mid-weld or do anything that makes it a little bit more complicated than just running one line after another, you know, forward and backwards and stuff like that. Try feeding the filler rod from the side, try feeding it from the back, try feeding it whichever way you can. Try using a feeding grip instead of a steady grip. I mean, we went over a lot of different ways to grip and all that stuff in different episodes, but it's really good practice. So try to get screwed up is basically the the point that I'm trying to make here. So enough rambling out of me, let's take the temperature here. Now the total elapsed time to weld that straight continuous was 12 minutes 41 seconds and we have a surface temperature of about 189 degrees or so which is roughly 100 degrees hotter than it was within when we started initially. So you know that is what that is. Let's take a look at the torch. I can actually grab a hold of it without any kind of serious discomfort or anything like that. It's uh, It's still cool to the touch. So the official reading on it is 109 degrees so we've gone up two degrees since our last job and that 12 minutes continuous uh, for only a two degree increase uh, after doing all of that is pretty consistent and uh, you know conducive to having a water cooler so quick temperature on the water 78 and a half degrees that means we've gone up five degrees from the last job that's well that would indicate that it's actually working so let's do this again this time a little bit behind the lens and I'm gonna do some weaving now I'll tell you straight up, these are just some throwaway practice weaves, not really trying to be pretty or anything like that. I'm just trying to lay something down that is uh, filling up this coupon here that it's continuous welding over and over and over again, just for the sake of doing all of this and whatnot. So yeah, these weaves aren't like gorgeous or anything like that. If you want, I'll put a weave uh, episode together just to kind of show you some different ones. Like I just did a bi-directional four dab. This is a bi-directional two dab known as the zigzag. After this, I'm gonna do a unidirectional two dab and a in a directional three dab so if none of that makes any sense to you then maybe I can put an episode together where we use some actual pretty looking weaves but either way we're gonna stack this up continuous one dab after another to fill this whole coupon up now you're gonna see me screw up here in a second and uh, it might make you laugh but here's the deal this coupon was getting super hot and you know the the, the radiant heat that's coming off of it was kind of tripping me up and I'm trying my hardest just to extend my fingertips as far as I can without burning my hands and that it just it, it got to the point where I just straight slipped <laughs> there we go the old-fashioned q-tip on the tungsten there and I tried to finish it off but I mean it was just way too hot I had to give it up unfortunately the show couldn't go on but either way the coupon was full I made a mad dash for the thermometer 288 degrees I had to freeze this on the uh, screen here just so you could see it because we're actually shooting still behind the lens and it's difficult to see so as soon as I can get all of that ripped off and the camera settings restored which only took about I don't know 20 seconds or so I can go ahead and grab a hold of the torch here and we can take a reading on the coupon already that 20 to 30 seconds has dropped at about 80 degrees and that's significant it, it cools off rapidly but let's take a look at the torch ignore this I missed so you're gonna see two different very different readings <laughs> which basically means that I totally missed so after we fire it at the neck of the torch take a look here we have 110 degrees that is a plus one degree from the last job that we did of continuous welding. I'll run over to the water, take a reading on it. We have 83 degrees as a maximum, which is an increase of 4.5 degrees from the last job that we did. The strangest thing about this is I'm going to say that this actually friggin' works. Now, as weird as it is, and maybe you would actually not do this, or maybe you would do this, but the way that I see that it works, Currently, the price of an Everlast water cooler unit is about 450 bucks. That's not too bad. In fact, that's very affordable. But at the same time, if you have a big job that comes a lot of welding or brings a lot of welding your way and you can't afford that 450 bucks, well, $12 will probably get you through the job. You know, if you want to be serious about it, maybe invest $12 into the pump itself or something with a little bit better head pressure that will pump through the torch, but at the same time, 15 or 20 dollars worth of an investment to get you through the job that buys the water cooler for the next job man that's a pretty awesome deal i mean it's it's really hard to beat but consider this as a uh, short term type of solution don't actually put it you know your whole workload or your whole career on a 
twelve dollar pump you know to, to get you through maybe it'll work maybe it won't but in a jam this will definitely do it and i'll definitely say that one now that's about going to wrap it up for this episode i want to thank you guys for watching as always if you got any questions or comments go ahead and throw them down there in the comments below i'll see if i can get back to you make sure you follow along on instagram at the dot fabricator and definitely check out my buddy roy crumrine at crummy welding all that information is down in the description below along with the facebook.com slash the fabricator series link and the fabrication series link if you need to drop us an email or check out some really awesome content. I'll see you guys on the next episode.